This is ThinkTech Hawaii. Community matters here. Yeah, welcome back to ThinkTech. Uh, this is Bigotry in America. We examine racial, religious bigotry and structures and, you know, organizations that address that one way or the other. I'm Jay Fidel. <clears throat> My special guest today is Andrea Snyder. She is the president, president of Hadassah, the Hawaii chapter of Hadassah. Mm -hmm. And we're going to tell you what that is. Hi, Andrea. Hi, Jay. Thanks for having me on the show. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, love to have you on the show. So uh, let's talk about let's talk about anything going on with Hadassah right now. We should know about because you know there are Jewish holidays coming up. Hadassah celebrates, of course, uh, Hanukkah, for example, in December. What's that about? That's right. Hanukkah is the festival of lights, so it's all about religious freedom. Um, the Maccabees fighting against the Romans and winning and uh, the oil that was in the temple that should have lasted for just one day lasted for eight days. So um, we're going to have uh, on uh, December 16th a party at uh, the home of Trudy and Al Long oh, to okay. celebrate Hanukkah. Perfect. I think that's how we originally met years ago. Yes, yeah. yes, I think so. Here's to Trudy and Al Long. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the happiest man in America. That's right. Also Jewish. <laughs> <laughs> and they're celebrating Sharoni's graduation from Cambridge. Yeah, Cambridge, uh, yeah. Right now, they're yeah. in Scotland uh, and England. Oh, that's yeah. fabulous, yeah. Well, we can mm -hmm. get them on the show and talk about her experience in England. Yes. Getting trained yet again. She, mm -hmm. she went from India to Punahou, teaching at Punahou, right. and now, and now uh, taking a degree in, uh, in, uh, in England. So uh, let's talk about Hadassah for a minute. Um, okay. Hadassah, it's, it wasn't born yesterday. It's been around for quite some time. It's a very prestigious organization. It's done a lot of work over the last 100 years or more. Um, how did it get organized? Who is it? What does it do? Okay. Well, Hadassah was founded by a woman, Henrietta Zold. Um, she was very learned. In America. In America, in the Baltimore area. She uh, worked, um, her father was a rabbi, so she was very learned. He believed in education for women. And she went to then Palestine in 1912, wow. and she was appalled by the um, unsanitary conditions and um, was determined to come back to this country, raise money to send two nurses to uh, Palestine to treat trachoma, an eye disease that's easily treated, and to provide pasteurized milk for mothers and babies. It was really a, a third world country at that time. It was a, a mandate, a, a protectorate, wasn't it? Under the British after World War I or before World War I. Uh, yeah. I guess it was after World War I it became protectorate. And then uh, it was in the doldrums for a long time until, uh, until the, uh, the 40s, late 40s, uh, and the Holocaust and people from Europe spilled into uh, Israel. And then. Tell me a short story about how about uh, how Hadassah, you know, was part, part of that whole continuum. Okay. Well, from the two nurses in 1913, um, more doctors and really American-style medicine uh, Hadassah brought to um, um, pre-state Israel. So by 1918, there, were, there was a contingent of 45. Um, doctors, nurses, and specialists. That's a lot for, for a country yeah. that really didn't have that yeah. many people. Yeah. Right. And then um, today, it's um, one of the leading hospitals in the world, and uh, people come from all over the Middle East for specialized treatment. They treat over a million patients a year and do cutting-edge wow. research. What's the name of the hospital? Well, it's Hadassah Medical Organization. There are two, one in Ain Karim and one on Mount Scopus. So the one in Mount Scopus was uh, blocked during, during uh, uh, the war until 67. So uh, doctors and nurses. Uh, that's in the south of Israel, Mount Scopus? No, that's uh, Jerusalem uh, East. Uh, OK, OK. East, oh, that's oh, clo east, close to the, um, the 67 boundaries, yeah. Right, right. So it was on the wrong side. <laughs> yeah, the wrong side. <laughs> yeah. But it's, it's OK now. Now yes. it's within the boundary of Israel, and um, now it's providing uh, excellent medical care. And, I, you know, I keep uh, hearing and reading that, um, you know, the Israeli medical community doesn't just operate in Israel. 
Um, they send doctors all around the world uh, and they respond to emergencies quickly and they're very good at it and well appreciated in many countries because they, they go out and do this as a matter of charity. Yeah. That's true. And um, Hadassah doctors and nurses have been part of the teams that Israel has sent to uh, Haiti, to uh, Mexico recently, to the Philippines, um, all over the world. Unfortunately, they are equipped to deal with emergencies and bombings and um, actually the Boston Marathon uh, hospitals there use some of the practices uh, treating patients that they do at Hadassah Hospital. Yeah, that's very interesting. I remember uh, not too long ago, in fact, Rabbi Krasnichansky was on the show mm -hmm. mm, a year, year and a half ago, and it was about the stabbings in Jerusalem. Um, and people would come up to you on the street. Actually, you'd walk down the street and somebody would come the other way and then as they passed you, they would turn on your back and stab you like a sewing machine really quickly it, with a, an intent to do terror and an intent to kill you. And um, so, you know, the Israelis had to figure out how to handle that because, uh, uh, you know, of course you're concerned that the fellow's not going to do it again, but you're also concerned to save the person who was stabbed. And so, uh, and traffic is tough in Jerusalem as it is in Tel Aviv. So how do you get medical help from the hospital, uh, you know, to the, to the person who's lying there bleeding? And uh, you, know, you know what they did? I was so creative. It's, it's, it reminded me of, of how the Israelis uh, suggested uh, that uh, uh, rear view mirrors be installed in the jets. A simple thing like that. The American jets, you know, didn't have rear view mirrors. You couldn't see from behind. So, so the Israelis took it out of a car, put it in the jet, and then the Americans started doing the same thing. Um, anyway, it's the same sort of creativity. So what, what happened is they used uh, motorbikes. Mm -hmm. And uh, they could, the motorbikes can go even when the traffic is really stuck. Right? Mm -hmm. And they trained the paralegals, or rather paramedicals, to uh, go to the wounded person on the street, take a full kit, and have a regular protocol about how you deal with someone who's been stabbed in the back. Uh, and, and that's, you know, the way they dealt with that. It was, it was high medicine, it was good medicine, but it was, and it was good delivery. It was response time. And they saved a lot of people that way. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'd like to make the point that um, Hadassah Medical Organization was um, uh, nominated for a Nobel Peace Prize in 2005 because both the staff and patients uh, are uh, Jewish, Palestinian, um, different religions, different backgrounds, and they all work together. Yeah, um, yeah. So I don't know if people realize that, you know, that the medical community is not just Jewish doctors at all. There's Arab doctors uh, galore, and they have good careers. Their careers are just as good as the careers of the Jewish doctors. So. Well, they all really work as teams, yeah. and um, you know, if you want to get back to terrorist situations, um, there have been cases where um, um, the hospital has treated both the victim and the terrorist. Yes, I know. So, yes. And, that, so, and that happened in many of these stabbing cases. Yes. Because the, the crowd yes. or the police would, would attack the attacker, and he'd be wounded at the same time. So to save a life yeah. is, Any is, life would be is the most important. Yeah. It's very yeah. touching. Mm -hmm. And that's been going on a long time. Yeah, right. it's not just now. So what else has uh, Hadassah done in terms of medical? Uh, are there Hadassah hospitals in this country, for example? No, the only Hadassah hospitals are in Israel, but um, through medical research and service to humanity, different doctors and uh, researchers are cooperating with uh, institutions in this country and others to come up with cutting edge um, research and hopefully cures for a lot of diseases. Yeah, that's great. So research, medical research, as, as with other scientific research that happens in Israel, can be very valuable, not only for Israel, but for this country and for the world. Right, here we're, um, one of our, our fundraising project is uh, this research in service to humanity, and we've picked four, um, Parkinson's, um, ALS. This is what Hadassah Hawaii supports the research yes, for. Yes, um, multiple sclerosis and ALS. Okay. So um, that really touches 
many of our families too. Yes, did yeah. I say Alzheimer's? I'm not sure if okay, I did, well, but well, well, Alzheimer's have also. To be included, yes. 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 So these are these are degenerative diseases. That's, that's right. That's what you're focusing on. That's right, and um, a lot of um, really important um, breakthroughs and trials, and uh, hopefully cures in so these diseases and others. The re and the research is done at the Hadassah Hospital in Israel. Yes, but there or are the two Hadassah hospitals. But there are collaborations with um, doctors and institutions in this country and other countries yeah. too. So it is collaborative. So you referred to a pamphlet. Let's let's quickly go through uh, some of these pamphlets so we know what what yeah. Hadassah is doing. Okay, I, yeah. I'll let you I'll let you take the lead on this. Okay, Just hold it up toward camera two okay. over there. Okay, okay. So um, Hadassah is a women's organization. So we have a picture of two two young women, uh, and uh, it's saying you want to do more than just talk about today's problems. So empower women advocates, promote women's health and wellness, and make Zionism resonate. So doing practical things like we're doing at Hadassah Hospital, uh, curing people and, and uh, doing research. So making Zionism resonate, that, does that mean that Hadassah supports Zionism? Yes, um, it, it, it was founded um, as, as an organization to um, support in a practical way uh, the plight of Jewish people, um, both in Europe and coming to then Palestine. Yeah, and the development of Israel over all yeah. those years from the year 1913, did you say, uh, until now, I mean, Israel has been, uh, you know, in, in, in various stages of development and Hadassah has been there to help you. Yeah? Right. One, one of the early projects was in uh, the early 1930s rescuing uh, young Jewish children from Europe um, and uh, youth Aliyah villages were set up to bring them and educate and give them trades and and to become Re productive. resettle them yes. from, from the war, from not the war but the anti-semitism well, that was going on in germany at the time yeah. right and today those same villages um help at risk children uh who who are not thriving in their home or local schools um giving them support and um it's really touching I'm, I'm touched some, of, some of, of the stories, yes, yeah. you can find on Hadassah.org. Hadassah.org, okay, yeah. take, take a look at Hadassah.org. <laughs> that, that's Andrea Snyder, she's the president of Hadassah, the Hadassah chapter here in Hawaii, and she's, I'm so happy that you're here to talk about it. We're going to take a short break, we come back and see some of these other pamphlets, examine some of the other things that Hadassah does and the positions it takes on some of the issues that are being raised today about the state of Israel and about Judaism in general. We'll be right back. This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. Guys, don't forget to check me out right here, the Prince of Investing. I'm your host, Prince Dykes. Each and every Tuesdays at 11 a.m. Hawaii time, I'm gonna be right here. Stop by here from some of the best investment minds across the globe and real estate, finances, stocks, hedge funds, managers, all that great stuff. Thank you. We all play a role in keeping our community safe. Every day, we move in and out of each other's busy lives. It's easy to take for granted all the little moments that make up our every day. Some are good, others not so much. But that's life. It's when something doesn't seem quite right that it's time to pay attention. Because only you know what's not supposed to be in your everyday. So protect your everyday. If you see something suspicious, say something to local authorities. Okay, we're back. We're live. I'm Jay Fridale here in ThinkTech, and uh, we're talking about bigotry in America and all the implications and issues that surround it. It's a great discussion. It's important. So um, uh, if I'm, if I'm a, a man, uh, can I join Hadassah? Can I be a member? Can I participate in the, the, you know, the events and programs that you have? 
Actually, you can, Jay. You can become an associate member. Uh, <laughs> so that's an associate lifetime member. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that's wonderful. And Hadassah, so we have a Hadassah chapter here in Hawaii, but I, I assume that as Hadassah has developed uh, over the past hundred years, uh, it has, it has created chapters in many places in this country and in, in, in Europe, I suppose, and maybe Asia as well. Tell me about it. Right. So um, Hadassah does have an international component, and the incoming um, Hadassah president of Canada is a winter visitor here. Uh -huh. So she comes every uh, winter here. And you get to see her and talk yes, to her and say hi. Yes, <laughs> yes. Marilyn Levin, she's really great. Yeah. And there are chapters in Mexico, Panama, different South American, European, Asian countries um, supporting. Um, many of them choose to support a either a specific part of the hospital or um, uh, research. Yeah, yes. yeah. Oh, that's great. And, and you can collaborate. And uh, you know, it's all about sadaka. Can you define for our audience what sadaka is? Right. Um, sadaka can be translated as charity, so giving. Um, um, so yeah. sadaka drives sadasa to do many things, to do medical research, to help people on all sides of the fence. Uh, to go to emergen, emergen, emergency situations and help people as, as uh, Hadassah and other medical organizations in, in uh, Israel do. Um, and you guys are dedicated to doing, to doing charity. That's your primary mission. So how do you express that? Uh, you support the hospitals, the Hadassah hospitals. Well, how else do you express it? We live in a world which has plenty of emergencies. How does Hadassah participate in dealing with them? Right. Well, um, in, in several ways, um, Hadassah does encourage all of us in our local chapters to, um, to practice Sadaka as well as um, supporting um, Hadassah internationally. We already talked about they are responders to disasters around the world, and we're really proud of that. Yeah, we had uh, Coralie Matayoshi, American Red Cross, on last week. And in fact, she was just on the radio, on Hawaii Public Radio, just a few minutes ago, mm -hmm. talking about what, what the American Red Cross does and, and how it responds to emergencies, not only in Hawaii. We, we have to be you know, aware of that possibility, and it, you know, it'll come, but, but everywhere. Uh, the fires in, uh, in, in California, mm -hmm. the earthquake in Mexico, uh, the damage with the storms in the Caribbean. Does Hadassah do? that kind of thing? Yes, it does when, when, um, when, it's, when it's appropriate, yeah, yes. Yeah. So you yeah. send people from Hawaii, they go, and you encourage them to go? Uh, no, we don't send people from Hawaii, but the trained uh, medical personnel at Hadassah Hospital are part of, an is part of Israel's... Um, uh, uh, they go wherever they, where they feel there's a need, yeah? In right. emergencies are certainly wherever a there need. is a need, and they have the expertise to help. Yeah. Yes. So, uh, are you a religious organization, or I mean, you, you, you mentioned that you're, you know, you're Zionistic and you support the state of Israel? Well, well uh, we are, are you a also Jewish, religious. Yeah. Well, we are a Jewish organization, but we don't espouse any um, particular um, branch of Judaism. So. Judaism is multi-faceted. Oh, yeah. uh, uh, yeah. Lots there of people are, have lots of different views. Right. For sure. There are basically Orthodox, conservative, Reform, Reconstructionists, but um, we don't um, we don't support any one group over another or any political party, both here and. And in Israel, right. so we're apolitical. And, 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 and although you are Jewish by identity and Zionistic by origin and identity, you're really interested in doing charity in whatever way you can. So I guess uh, the question is, you know, we, we, we live in a time when there is bigotry, religious bigotry and racial bigotry, regrettably uh, in this country. Um, and it's sad to see that emerging. Um, but it, it, there are indications of it, and you know you don't have to scratch very hard to find those indications. And I, I you know, wonder what role uh, Hadassah might play in dealing with bigotry uh, in this country, for example, and elsewhere. Mm 
Um, well, um, certainly we, Hadassah nationally, our national president speaks out against uh, uh, bigotry and discrimination. Um, I think that's really important to make our voice heard. And um, we, uh, we also have issues that we are, um, that bring us together too, that we focus on like women's health issues that really cut across any um, political lines or, or um, and I think, uh, um, I think that's one of the virtues of Hadassah, like we formed a women's health coalition with the American Heart Association and other groups fighting for gender equality in medical research and testing and uh, uh, cures. Uh, so a few years ago, Hadassah did every step counts, and I got this watch. <laughs> so my family and I are trying to be oh, really? healthy and keep track of our steps. And um, heart health, too. Uh, more American women die of heart disease. Yeah than cancer, for instance. So, so you're, not, you're not necessarily into activism or responding to activism, but I, I wonder, uh, you know, what happens when a member comes to you and says, you know, <clears throat> I, you're my go-to place for religious commun community, mm -hmm. uh, and I have an example, I have, I'm living through an experience of bigotry. What does Hadassah say to this person? What, what comfort do you give? What position do you take in dealing with that? Well, um, if you're asking on a local statewide level. Okay, I'll ask on a local statewide. Okay, okay. Um, I must admit that I haven't experienced that myself or had someone come to me saying that, um, but it's true that um, we do want to, I think, establish dialogue and um, correct information um, like uh, um, I guess I'm leaving Hawaii, going to Charlottesville. There were people with Nazi flags saying Jews will not replace us. Um, that doesn't well, happen. They, they stood you outside know, the temple there in Charlottesville yeah. with AK-47s yeah. and bulletproof vests and police yeah. helmets. Yeah. It was very scary. Yeah. So um, fortunately, I think Hawaii, with our with our background, um, we're a state of a lot of immigrants and um, uh, really there's an aloha spirit that um, I think most of us hold uh, yeah. and you know and value and qualities like um, being humble, being respectful. Uh, and not being bigoted in any way. Right, right. Yeah. I think our, our I think Hawaii can be a great example. Yeah. <clears throat> now, uh, you have a book here, and I, uh, I'll hold it up, or maybe you should hold it up. It's <laughs> called How to Talk About Israel. <laughs> and this is by the Jewish Federations <laughs> of North America, <laughs> the Israel Action Network, and I guess it's by Hadassah. Yeah, there it is. That's the book. Okay. So okay. what's that book about? What is that book telling us? Okay. Well, um, this, book, this book is... Um, Giving, giving an overview of um, how to approach the very complicated um, present day situation yeah. in, in Israel. Yeah. Just like in this country, you may not agree with President Trump, you, you know, we may not agree with Prime Minister Netanyahu. Netanyahu. Yeah. Um, but um, it's really important to have facts and to have um, uh, um, to have a dialogue and and to to create a to create a background um, for reconciliation and um, mutual benefit for say Palestinians and Israelis. Reconciliation, coming together, working together, collaborating. I mean, that's the way uh, Hadassah has been from from the outset, and. Um, I just, it, it's, it, this is interesting because 
I think there's a lot of dialogue, and sometimes the Jewish people and Jewish organizations don't respond at all. And, uh, and the public, uh, you know, they, they get their messaging from people who are adverse to Israel and adverse to Judaism. So this is a, 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 a book that will help a Jewish people respond to some of those statements and misstatements about what happens in Israel and what happens with the Palestinian issue in Israel, right? Um, that's true, but it's not just for it's not just for Jewish people. You can, uh, um, you know, it's, it's really hard. it's really <laughs> it's for perfectly consistent with your whole mission, isn't it? Right. It's really for anyone who yeah. who wants a better understanding. Yeah, yeah. And one way we do try to um, I'm I'm part of the Jewish Film Festival committee and. Mm -hmm. This was from 2015. We showed uh, a movie called Under the Same Sun, where an Israeli businessman and a Palestinian wanted to, wanted to bring solar energy to uh, a community on the West Bank. And it turned out that this collaboration, despite a lot of uh, obstacles, uh, became really, um, that venture turned into a campaign for peace. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's great when people do that. Have you been to Israel, Andrea? I have. I what have several What do you think of times. Israel? What is your, uh, several times, good. <laughs> 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 what has your experience been? What has your observation, your impression been? Well, um, the first time I went, I was just out of college in 1971, and I worked on a kibbutz and studied Hebrew. Mm -hmm. So my first job was picking olives. <laughs> <laughs> That's perfect. <laughs> and um, it, it gave me an appreciation for um, the land, the people, the diversity. It's certainly a diverse uh, uh, country. I was in the um, Emic region, and um, there were Arab towns, and uh, people were getting along. <laughs> this was in 71. Yeah, has it changed um, since then? Uh, well, I guess the last time I went was with Temple Emmanuel uh, oh. six years ago. We, we had a trip there, and um, that was a very meaningful trip, both um, spiritually and uh, to see advances and uh, changes. And uh, yeah, oh. I really recommend uh, going. Are you a Zionist? I am a Zionist, yeah, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and what do you think about the, uh, this whole initiative that there's so many people so excited about, uh, some here, including some here, about uh, boycotting Israel, a cultural boycott, an economic boycott, a sports boycott, you name it. Um, what do you think about that? What does Hadassah think about that? Well, um, we, um, I think that um, boycott and just choosing one side to um, impact isn't, isn't the way to go. Uh, uh, sure, Israel has made mistakes, but the Palestinian uh, political structure also um, needs to be a willing partner for peace. So um, I, I really, um, well, I do want to emphasize Israel's right to exist uh, for, for one thing and, uh, and that... Um, and you, have, you have a statement you made, so read it. Oh, okay, okay, I'll read it. <laughs> um, Boycott, divestment, and sanctions movement is a global network of activists promoting these actions to be adopted by institutions, organizations, and others. While the claim is an equitable and peaceful solution to the conflict, the goal is to undermine the democratic Jewish state of Israel and the two-state solution to create one Arab majority state. I want to emphasize Israel's right to exist and to point out that one-sided pressure is counterproductive to achieving peace. That goal of peace depends on both Israelis and Palestinians working together with international support toward a negotiated two-state solution benefiting both sides. So it's important to create an environment for economic cooperation, constructive engagement, foster 
reconciliation, promote understanding and trust, and coexistence. That's beautiful, Andrea. You are really a wonderful representative of Hadassah because I think you express what Hadassah is all about. And uh, it's wonderful to have you as the president of Hadassah here in Hawaii. It's so mm. constructive and mm. helpful to all of us and, uh, and to have you here on the show. Thank you so much, Jay. Thank you, Andrea. Andrea Snyder, president of Hadassah Hawaii. Aloha. <laughs>